Hey guys, welcome back to Maverick Watch Reviews. Now I've got another shopping in Japan watch. I've been wanting to review this particular watch for gosh, two or three years now and I'm really excited. Today we have the Seiko Prospects Trans Ocean 200 meter automatic diver. And this is model number SBDC039. And as usual, we're gonna open this thing up, look at all the features and functions, check out the build quality, and then I'll let you know what I think of this Trans Ocean from Seiko. Spoiler alert, I love it. Now, as usual, I've partnered up with Shopping in Japan and I am really, really excited. Again, they loan me these watches and I don't get to keep them, nor do I make a dime from them. However, you can use the code MAV20OFF to save yourself $20 off of your shipping cost, which again, will cover most of your shipping cost. I think the shipping cost from Japan is $25 to $30, something like that. So it will cover most of your shipping cost. Anyway, here we go. Really nice uh, Seiko watch box. Now I've never seen one of these kind of higher end Seiko watch boxes. So uh, I like it, man. Actually the box is actually made instead of China. Look at that, it's made in Japan. Pretty cool. All right, let's open this thing up. Let's take a look at this watch. Let me flip it over here. I can get it to come out, there we go. All right. Now the watch box, the inner watch box has like a, kind of like a, I don't know, pillowy texture. It's really nice. And of course you get the manual down here. I believe it's written in English and Japanese. Yep, there you go. English in the back and Japanese in the front. There we go. All right. Let's get all this junk Ola out of the way. Let's take a look at this thing. There you go. I mean, just, just from, you know, first looking at it, it's a stunning, <laughs> it's an absolute stunning looking watch. Really like the colorway and where they decided to put the black and where they decided to put the polished or the brush surfaces. I mean, I just like the overall look of this watch a lot. Now, it's gonna be kind of hard to pick up on camera, but I don't know if you can see that kind of diamond dial, that kind of diamond pattern. I don't know if you can pick that up or not, but anyway, We'll go ahead and put the specs up on the left-hand side of the screen, and then we'll talk more about this watch. All right, you are looking at a 45 millimeter Dia Shield coated stainless steel case. It's 13.8 millimeters thick. It's 51 millimeters lug to lug. It's on a uh, 23, basically what it is, it's an 18 millimeter bracelet that kind of tapers up to a 23 or a 23 that tapers down to an 18. And this bracelet is also dia shield coated too. Uh, it does have a sapphire crystal with an AR coating. It's water resistant to 200 meters, which of course is 660 feet. It does have the 6R15 movement with a 50 hour power reserve. You do have a screw down crown over there at four o'clock and I'll talk Talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, you do have a screw down case back. Uh, it is windable, it is hackable. It does have a date function over there at 4.30. Uh, it does not have a day function. Of course, it's got Lumabrite. I mean, it's a Seiko diver. And it has a solid 120 click ceramic bezel. This ceramic bezel really does kind of steal the show. Uh, and of course, it is made in Japan. So guys, again, I love the look of this watch, man. It's just, I, I just love it. And man, this bezel is, I mean, the camera doesn't do it justice. This bezel is gorgeous. It's basically a solid mono block uh, ceramic bezel. Basically, they take one big piece of ceramic and they kind of carve the bezel out of it. And all these numbers and little index marks on the bezel are laser etched. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a beautiful watch, man. Um, now, one thing about this bezel, which I thought was kind of cool, it's actually raised. You can see right there. It's actually raised, it's gonna protect that sapphire crystal just that little bit more. Uh, I really do like that ceramic also being very hard. And of course, with that dia shield coating on the case and the bracelet, it's gonna make the watch really, really scratch resistant. Not scratch proof, uh, as some sellers online say, but it makes it really, really scratch resistant. It's kind of like a PVD process. Uh, with that chemical, uh, it just makes an incredibly hard coating on the watch. And I think they do it to like one or two uh, microns, I believe is the thickness of the coating they put on here. Anyway, whatever they do, they make it much more scratch resistant than just the base stainless steel that the watch is made out of. So let's talk a little bit more about the dial. Uh, you've got really nice applied indexes with a nice polish around each index. And if you look, you can kind of see that inner chapter ring and the indexes are set back into that chapter ring. Let me uh, wipe that fingerprint off of there for you. If you can see, they're kind of set back there. Really neat way they did that. A uh, nice hour hand, minute hand, second hand. Um, just a really kind of dark, dark black dial. And again, I don't know if you can see that 
that pattern or not. I gotta hope you can. But anyway, really cool looking pattern. Uh, and of course, you have Seiko at the top. You have the Prospects logo, automatic, divers 200 meter. Then you have Japan 6R15 right next to the six o'clock index. You've got your date over there. It's actually not really at 430 exactly. It's a little bit closer to the five o'clock index than it is to four. So you maybe say like 445 actually. Um, and uh, again, you have that really nice ceramic bezel. The, the click action on the bezel is really nice. It's a 120 click bezel. It's got super nice action, very little back play. But the thing is, and y'all are gonna appreciate this, it lines up perfectly with the 12 o'clock index. Look at that, perfect. This is how Seiko should do all of their watches. Basically, I would love if Seiko had a lot of these features in some of their lower end watches. You know, sapphire crystals, that would be nice. Ceramic bezels, that would be nice. Maybe some dye shield coating on some of their lower end watches, that would be nice. This bracelet, I love these machined scissor clasps. Why can't they do this on more of their watches, man? I just don't get it. Citizen can do it. Why can't Seiko seem to do it? I just don't understand. I mean, it's not like it's gonna be that much more expensive. Uh, I, I just don't know. But I wish they would do it on a lot more of their watches. Since we're talking about the bracelet, there you go. Uh, there's really not many uh, polished surfaces on this watch. The really only polished surfaces that you're gonna see on the, are on the side of the case. You got that really highly polished side on the left and the right hand side. Let me wipe this off again. There you go. Really highly polished and then you have drilled lugs and then you have everything else is pretty much brushed, man. Uh, very angular. This kind of reminds me of that, uh, one of those Citizen Satellite Waves, one of the earlier models. Very angular case, really neat case design. I love that really big difference between the brushed and the polished portions of the case. Then you hit that all black ceramic bezel. Just a neat look, man. Real high quality bracelet, very nicely machined. None of the links bind up with each other, which I like. Um, again, I love that machine scissor clasp, real nice. Of course, you got your signed Seiko logo there on the buckle. And I think these are polished. Yeah, these are polished on the sides, the links are. And let me show you these stickers, by the way. Here's your Seiko Prospects logo right there. There's your regular hang tag. And then here is the Dia Shield hang tag right there. So again, doesn't make it scratch proof, but it makes it much, much more scratch resistant. Let's go ahead and take uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the case back. You've got your Seiko Tsunami logo, and you've got basically what you would expect: Seiko Air Divers 200 meter, made in Japan, 6R15, the Prospects logo. And then of course the uh, the serial number of the watch. I mean, you're gonna expect this type of stuff. Neat looking case back, I like how it kind of tapers right there. Nice looking case back. Nice crown pop, super nice crown pop. Buttery smooth winding, I mean really smooth. Almost feels Swiss made, that's how good the winding is. And of course the first position is your, uh, is your date. They're already popping out. There we go, let me try this again. And you know, most dates on watches are counterclockwise. So there you go. And this has a quick set date, by the way. So the second that minute hand hits 12, the date instantly changes, which I like. And then of course, pop it out again. And that is your time setting. So there you go. And of course it hacks. You can see the second hand hack right there. Now this watch, I have to admit guys, it's a little more expensive than I think it should be. I mean, yeah, you're getting a great movement. You get the 6R15 movement. You got 23 joules, a 50 hour power reserve. You are getting sapphire. You are getting ceramic. And I'm betting that, that a lot of that price has to do with the ceramic bezel. I mean, this thing is, uh, it's gorgeous, man. It is just gorgeous to look at. That laser etching of the indexes. And of course that triangle up there with the Lumabrite inside. Uh, I'm betting that part of the process, I mean, part of the uh, expense of this watch is just the manufacturing process alone. Uh, good looking watch, man. Really good looking watch. I'm trying to think of anything else uh, that I forgot to tell you about the actual watch itself. Anyway, there are also a lot of different variations of this watch. They have a white model with a white dial and a gold uh, plated case. They have a kind of like a blue, not sunburst, but kind of like a... Um, like the Rolex uh, Deep Sea, kind of like that blue in the middle, and then it fades to black. 
They have a Hal they have a couple of Halliburton models. Now Halliburton uh, basically is called the Zero Halliburton. Zero Halliburton is a company out of Japan that makes uh, luggage. You've probably seen their briefcases in movies a million times, and I'll show you one of those here in a second. But Zero Halliburton was actually started by the guy that started Halliburton Oil Field Services. I'm sure you've heard of those. Former Vice President. Um, Dick Cheney used to be the president of Halliburton, and they're basically a company based out of Texas that does oil field services. Those were the guys that went over to Kuwait uh, and basically capped all of those um, those oil fires and stuff like that. So they're a big, big company in the oil field services. They you know they take care of wells and and they do maintenance on wells and all sorts of other stuff. Anyway. They were actually sold to the Japanese luggage maker called Ace, hence the collaboration with Seiko. So that's why you have a Seiko Halliburton model. And um, those are really cool. They basically have a line down the middle of the watch. And I'll show you one of those right here. Really cool looking watches. They have a blacked out version and then they have kind of like a gray version. But that's one of their watches. And let me show you the actual um, briefcase, the Halliburton briefcase. Now, again, you've probably seen these in a million different movies. Anyway, so that's why you've probably seen that briefcase before because that's a Zero Halliburton briefcase, which is now owned, again, by the Ace Luggage Company out of Japan. So uh, anyway, I, I love this watch. Again, I think it's a little more expensive than it probably should be, but that's due to the manufacturing processes. I mean, you got the higher end movement, like I said, and some of the other features. Uh, I mean, they, if they could knock off a couple hundred dollars of this watch, I think that would be perfect pricing, kind of like the Seiko Shogun. If you get kind of near Seiko Shogun uh, money, I think it'd be a lot better value for the money. Now, these also come in uh, chronograph models. Let me show you one of those. Those are about, uh, gosh, they're almost more than twice what one of these costs. So there's one of the chronograph models. And let me also show you the uh, that blue model, that, that blue sunburst model. There's that one. So there you go. So you've got a lot of, it was like four or five different versions of this watch. Actually like, actually like seven or eight different versions of this watch. Uh, just a really neat watch. These first came out in uh, 2016 and people were crazy about them then. They're still crazy about them now. Uh, if you want one of these, I'll make sure to put a link in the description field. So you head on over to shopping in Japan's website and pick one up. Okay guys, they're not cheap. They're $1,027 over in shopping in Japan. Uh, but you also, again, use that uh, discount code MAV, M-A-V, 20-O-F-F for $20 off your order. And again, that's going to save you most of your shipping cost from Japan. So let's go ahead and try this thing on. Oh, man, it already feels great. Gosh. Fits right out of the box. Man, that is a handsome looking watch, man. Wow really comfortable that bracelet is fantastic it doesn't you know grab any of your hairs it's very well machined again those links don't bind together which i really appreciate now let's go ahead and give you the uh, loom shot oops the tags got in the way all right let's go ahead and kill the studio light let's kill the monitor i can get you a much better loom shot than the last watch i did because it is nighttime you can already see that it's glowing. Let's go ahead and zap this thing. There you go. Just what I would expect from a Seiko diver that's got Luma bright. There you go, man. I mean, again, just what I would expect. Everything is going nice and bright. Even those uh, those hands, looks like the hands might be growing even a little bit brighter than the uh, indexes. You've got your 12 o'clock pip there. So just what I would expect, man. So let's go ahead and cut everything back on. Let's go ahead and finish up the review. And I'm really curious to see what y'all think of the pricing of this watch. Again, a little steep in my personal opinion, uh, but you are getting a lot of watch for that money. You're definitely getting a ton of watch for that money. I forgot to tell you about this crown. It's not a sign crown. It looks like it's blacked out. I don't know if that's another little piece of ceramic or not. I'm guessing it might be. Uh, neat looking crown, man. And again, buttery smooth. So guys, again, that's really been about it for this one. I'd love to hear your comments in the comments section. Tell me what you think about the price. Tell me what you think about the watch overall. Just a good looking watch, man. Anyway, again, this has been the Seiko Prospects Transocean 200 meter automatic diver. And this is model number SBDC039. Again, there are like seven or eight different versions of this watch. There are a couple chronograph versions of this watch. There's a zero Halliburton. I think there's two Halliburton versions of this watch. 
So uh, go out there and get one if you like it, man. Fantastic watch. And I wish Seiko would put you know some of the specs in this watch in some of their lower-end models. So anyway, guys, until the next review, I will see you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.